said to my mother, how can it be hailing when the sun is shining? There was, you know, I heard this, this noise hitting the house going blip, 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 blip. And she said, oh, here, I'll show you what's going on. And she took me to the front window and had me peer through the blinds. And she said, that's a machine gun up there. And your country, you see the American flag on it. Your country is shooting at you. It's not hailing. And this was a great surprise to me. You see, I was just six years old. Never occurred to me my country, tis of thee, would shoot at me. <laughs> they tried to c kill all the colored folks they could see. They tried to kill everything they see. Don't make you live for the money, the rich or poor. They tried to kill you if you was colored. All down here. All down here, they, they tried to kill gun dealers. Well, they just was giving them out to the whites. They go out there and kill your nigger. And that is literally what happened. The Black Wall Street was the most vibrant and successful black community in America. There were children and teenagers growing up educated and affluent. Everything was right there. So someone was asking me about going downtown in Tulsa. I said, I, I think I only went downtown one time before I was six years old because we had everything we needed in the neighborhood. We didn't have to go downtown. Because of the riot, the oldest building in Greenwood dates from 1922. Black Wall Street Memorial, Pioneers Gardens, 1996. 1996, Wall Street, that's Greenwood here. Greenwood here is our Wall Street. Yeah, we live like we're Wall Street. A lot of folks were in our the city then, and a lot of folks come in from New York and Chicago, and we had a big time here on Greenwood. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is our country right we was all right for a while. <laughs> we was all right for a while. And old Nick come along and tore it up. These kids watched movies at Bill Williams' Dreamland Theater, the best black-owned theater in the Southwest. They shopped at D.L. Hooker's general stores and watched him bring the day's profits to the bank by horseback. They received house calls from Dr. A.C. Jackson, who the Mayo brothers called the finest black surgeon in America. As teenagers, they frequented the luxurious Stratford Hotel and held their senior proms in its ballroom. They watched their older brothers and sisters propose in Williams Confectionery. They reveled in vibrant Greenwood nightlife that attracted musicians like Cab Calloway, high-stakes gamblers, and all kinds of entrepreneurs. Tulsa was a city awash in oil money. It was largely in the white community, but it went to the black community as well, too. You had an explosion of businesses. You had an explosion of, of African Americans running their own businesses, um, owning their own homes, building their own homes as well, too. But it's also happening during this great period of rising white racism. They burnt down over 30 square blocks in the Greenwood area. Terrible fire was for many years the best kept secret. Children in the white part of town grew up not even knowing that they had been arrived. Uh, the mayor of Tulsa, the first woman mayor of Tulsa, Susan Savage, told me that she was a grown woman, uh, although she had lived in Tulsa and had been born there after the riot, that she was a grown woman but she, before she even knew that there had been a riot. It wasn't until I got to OU in my uh, junior year in college I heard anything about the Tulsa race riot, and I was, I was, I just couldn't believe it. A sort of culture of silence had settled down, and no one spoke of it, except in the black part of town, where they spoke of it in hushed tones and did not want to convey the impression that uh, they had been uh, defeated and almost destroyed by the action that was taken. I was afraid for a long time, and still, Thanking God that I was still alive, that my family was alive, and that we were all together and trying, they were trying to start over. I say 
the reason our people didn't talk about it, we were afraid of it starting again. And that's what most of us felt. Why tell our children who were growing up and feel more animosity in their heart? An incident in an elevator changed everything. He was a shoe shine boy. When he stepped on the elevator, the elevator was not quite aligned with the floor. So he tripped and he fell and he grabbed the little 17 or 18 year old elevator operator. And the people who were standing there getting off of the elevator or uh, waiting to get on said that he had attacked her. And there was no dynamite in America in the 1920s like an alleged attack by a black man on a white woman. So when that happened, he was absolutely terrified. There's no question about that. She couldn't make eye contact with a white woman. Confusion spread, but hatred ruled. Folks just went crazy. And you know, during those days, that's all you had to do was put the word out that some black man insulted some white. No one bothered to check to see whether it was true or not. You just grab your gun and go start shooting at somebody. <laughs>